So when we started talking about this shoot, I was telling Rush and the guys, dude, I got something new, something different, it's untouched. We're gonna go out to an area that has been closed for bottom fishing for about 30 years. I think every fisherman dreams of fishing a spot that is virgin. Straight red, this is what dreams are made of. This is cotton. We're gonna be able to fish something that hasn't been touched in over 30 years. Can we drop, can we drop, can we drop? Dave Downing is a legend in the snowboard space. I got two on one jig. This is taco harvesting, Russ. When the weather lines up and you've got a good crew, man, I wanna go rock fishing. That is a world record class. This is cutting at its finest. I think every fisherman dreams of fishing a spot that is virgin, that's completely untouched. You know, rock fishing for me is sort of a, a new passion. Um, I've been fishing a long time, you know, out of my hometown here in San Diego. Uh, I've done a lot of different fishing, but growing up, you know, rock fishing was always plan B. And since then, I've got a whole new appreciation for it. It's probably fueled by one major component, and it's like, I love to eat them. But the other things I like about them is the variety and where you can find all the different sizes and species and learning new spots. All that's really cool. But when the weather lines up and you've got a good crew, man, I want to go rock fishing. And first phone call to my boy Dave Downing. Dave is my right hand man, my deckhand all season, and he's grown to love rock fishing as much as I have. What's up, Rush? Dave, what's up, buddy? We got a workout for you here. Cool. Yeah, it looks like you, it looks like you got a little bit of snow right there. Yeah, here's your snow for the day. Yeah, did, you, did you bag this yourself? <laughs> yeah, I brought it from Tahoe. No. Nice. There we go. Dave Downing is a legend in the snowboard space, and everybody throws that word around. I don't. I mean, you get certain guys in certain areas that are at the top of their game, especially for a very long period of time. Dave's 55 years old and he still commands as much respect in the snowboarding game as anybody. And Dave has been around basically from day one. You know, he was never a big pipe guy or a competition guy, but he was the guy that could pull off tricks on film. And when I say film, I mean film. Like no redos, no nothing. These guys would go out and shoot film in the most remote places on earth, pulling off these insane tricks. Man, I look at that footage now and I can't believe it's my boy. So when we start talking about this shoot, I was telling Rush and the guys, dude, I got something new, something different, it's untouched. Again, Rush a little hesitant. He's, uh, he's only caught some really tiny rockfish out here for whatever reason. Now I've been rock fishing before with Ali and you know, it was, we caught some nice fish. There's a different species, huh? Yeah! Nice. I'd say this is at least a taco and a half right here. A little cilantro, some cheese. We were able to make a few uh, tacos, some keychain cods and whatever, but something's happened now that's changed the whole program. All right guys, so today I got a treat for you. Something Dave hasn't even done and we fish together all the time. We're gonna go out to an area that has been closed for bottom fishing for about 30 years. Let your imagination wander. I'm, I got my 30 year class reunion this year. Do you? <laughs> yeah. well, you're only 28. How did class that of 1993. Oh my gosh, you're so old. So yeah, about the time you were, when you graduated high school was the last time you could fish this spot. Wow. I've been out there two times now. One was on a party boat with a bunch of industry guys. I saw cod things, and you know how I'm crazy about my rockfish that blew my mind. And there's somebody else on this boat, not you, that really likes to catch rockfish especially on a jig, big loses day. his mind. Yep. More, bigger, species we've never seen before. It's been crazy. So I'm hoping it bites like it had before. Same plan, we bring them home, make tacos out of them. Dude, I think I'd send you home without some fish tacos. Come on, I wouldn't do that to you, we're boys. I appreciate it. Yep. The changes in these depth restrictions have really opened up a massive playground for us to go chase these fish. We are basically limited by nothing. You can fish them as shallow as 100 feet, or you could go out to 2,000 feet, and there will be rockfish waiting for you if you find the right spot. 
I mean, I was just getting hammered on the way down. That was crazy. It was like, I wasn't getting bent on the bottom. I came way off the bottom and just <laughs> This is cotting at its finest. Is this better cotting, Russ? This is cotting. <laughs> now he's this a This is cotting at its finest. Now he's a nice. cotton. <laughs> this is taco harvesting, Russ. Here comes mine. Here comes mine. What is it, Dave? There's rushes. Oof. Big red. Big old rojos. Look how red they are. Big. That's where fish tacos come from. It's awesome. What do you got, Rush? Straight red. This is what dreams are made of. Well, this isn't a red. That, is what it? is that? That's a um. That's a Mexican rockfish. I, that's the shallowest I've probably ever seen one. Look at that, boys. So see the shape of this? It's shaped like a bass or like a grouper. See how that guy's a little more streamlined and thin? He's got the black spots on him. That, they, we'll call him out of Florida. It's some kind of speckle rockfish, but they're supposedly like just the best eating there is. Only a Florida boy can catch a Florida rockfish. Better one. I thought I had a smaller one. He fell off and this thing just got cream. So in California, rock fishing has always been sort of regulated by two things. Number one is season. The other big component to it has been depth. So previously we were limited to fish shallower water. And there was also a thing tied to that depth restriction, which was the depth had to be contiguous to the coastline in 2023, we got the big change where they basically said, okay, look, fish in any depth you want does not have to be contiguous. Something that's been closed for 30 years, not touched, baits were not going to the bottom in all that time. What do you think is gonna happen there? Oh, there we go. Nothing there, huh, Rush? Nothing? Oh, oh there it is. There he is. Oh. Find one, Dave? I got one. You're able to find a fish down there, Captain Ross? I got a small one. I don't want to bring it all the way up. <laughs> Sound well, bite. a long way down. I know. These little slow pitch rods from Penn so are good. Oh, so are, much fun. This is a perfect setup for this. So much fun. Oh, we got buddies. Ooh, Jeremy. How about that? Oh, you got doubled up. Look at Rush's doubled up. I got two up. on one jig. Rush is that good. Look at this thing. Bow catch. Wow. You know they're thick when you catch two, one on each jig. If anybody can do it, buddy. We call this a stringer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> one on each hook. So let's fire those guys down on that release rig. One of the biggest challenges is safely releasing rockfish that you don't want. And this is where the sequelizer comes to play. I'm gonna leave these in the water while you send that guy down and then we'll put these guys down, Dave. How about that? Perfect. The sequelizer is a device that actually clamps onto the lip of the rockfish and we have a dedicated rod set up and electric to send the fish back down. There, there he goes, back home. All rockfish will suffer from barotrauma when you bring them up from the depths. The eyes blow up, the stomach comes out and distends, and the fish honestly doesn't look great when you get them to the surface. They're all puffed up. One thing that most people don't realize is if you put that fish on a descending device and you send him down slowly back to about 150 feet, the inherent pressure from the water will push his eyes back in, will push the stomach back in, and that fish will swim off healthy. Some of the other characters that we normally catch, with Boccaccio is the biggest generally of all of our rockfish, except for the cow cod. And those are less sought after because they can get a little bit wormy and they're really available. The grand rockfish of them all is the cow cod. Oh, that is a cow cod. A cow cod. That's, I knew it looked different. It had that that's little... the endangered fish. We got to release him. That's endangered? Yeah, we're going to send him back down. Grab him, Dave. So when we fish our normal spots, Rush, look at that. Cool and that's, that's not a big one. When we fish our normal spots, we might see one of these a year. Here, you're gonna see five, six, seven of them in a day. Really? It's crazy. This is just, it's- So we're gonna send this guy back touch. down. On touch, we're gonna descend him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Time. For sure. a cool sure. looking fish. They get up to almost 40 pounds. They live to be very, very old. They will put up a fight. 
the impetus for a lot of the closures that we have in Southern California are based around one fish, and that's the cow cod. And a lot of those areas were off limits strictly because of depth previously, but now they are available, so we are gonna run into more and more of these fish. Come over here and gently set them in the water. And what'll happen is he'll get down to 100 feet and he'll pop right off. Can we drop, Captain? Can we drop? Wait till, wait till the boat stops, Frothy. Can we drop? Can Jeez. we drop? Can we drop? Can we drop? Jeez. Hey, Dad, can we drop? Jeez. It's always fun to get a third guy on the boat, especially somebody from Ali's side who is just going to bust on him all day long. Trying to get to the other spot, but these fish won't let us. That's not, that's not a bad thing. No, this mark looks too juicy to drive past. Let's see what this is. If it's more boccaccio, we move. If it's good stuff, we might beat it up a little. I don't know what way we're drifting. Neither do I, Dave. That makes two of us. These guys. You can tell we fish a lot together because we're giving such a hard time to each other. So Dave is a good friend of Ali's who shares that same passion of fishing that we all do. Dave, did you grow up in Southern Cal? I did, yeah. I, I'm from Southern California. I uh, grew up in a beach town, beach kid, surfer, grom, you know. Um, my dad fished in uh, scuba dove. He was a diver and fisherman. He had a fishing trawler when I was in the 60s and 70s early, you know. So he was cod fishing out here when it was open, right. you know, and then it closed. So it's pretty cool to be able to, he's passed away now, but it's really cool to be, out, to be able to fish out here, you know, place where he did. Absolutely. And what got you into snowboarding? I mean, <laughs> obviously you're kind of a big deal from what I hear. I got into snowboarding kind of on an accident. Um, I worked at a surf shop, you know, and then they, we started carrying snowboards and, and then I got into to snowboarding and because I was a surfer, you know, uh -huh. and just fell in love with it. Like, uh, I don't know, the first, first time I did it, I just fell in love with it. So. You knew it was for you. I knew basically. it was for me, yeah, yeah, totally. You loved it and then you became a pro. I, yeah, I did. Well, it's funny because I, I worked in the as a rep in the snowboarding industry in, in the surf shop, and then I became a pro snowboarder after I was a rep. So I kind of I was 21 when I started snowboarding. Right. And then I was uh, probably a pro, started to be a pro when I was like 25 or something like that. So I was always kind of the older guy in snowboarding. Dave loves spending the day on the boat with Ali and. He loves the grind of chasing those tunas around and, and just doing the whole Southern Cal fishery. Oh, wait. Oh. Is that on the bottom or off the No, it? that was off the bottom. I it got just... stopped. Wow. But I didn't get a hook in him. The Jurassic Park cod fishing. Look at that Look one. At that Look at that one, bro. Oh, this one's fighting on its way. It's right here. What do you got? Another nice Rojo. Wow, another good one. Solid. This is this is crazy. He just smashed the jig. As many as you Look want. Look at that. Yeah, Ollie. <laughs> well, you weren't on the bottom either. Nope. <laughs> I lost one on the way up, and I just held it there, and it started getting bit. Crazy. This is insane. This is as good as it gets. This is better than it gets. I think we know we can catch a, a limit of fish here. We feel pretty good about that. Now it's time to do what we did in Florida and let's see what's out there. We're this is there. what I want to see. I'm dying. I'm dying to see what this footage brings back. One of the most revealing things about this trip for me was the bottom. I got our hooker electric cam set up here. You remember this program? Oh yeah. Growing up, we were told a couple of things. Rockfish live and die on one rock, not true. The bottom is all hard bottom and rocky or rubbly, not true. And we've sort of disproved both of those theories on this trip. Hope to see you again. I don't even know if you have to go all the way to the bottom, Ali. I think you can get like, hit, I would hit the bottom and reel it up. I'll come up slow. We were dropping cameras down in crystal clear water. I've never seen the water as clear as it's been this season. And we finally got a good look at the bottom. And what we learned was it's a lot of ledges and a lot of sand. Did not see that coming. Sometimes you'll feel the sand, you know, on your sinker, but 
The bottom to me, if you told me that was the Bahamas at 400 feet, I would have bought it all day long. I was picturing more rock and rubble and you know little weird coral heads and some plant growth and stuff like that. Couldn't be more incorrect. It was really interesting to get that one sense of fishing back. When you're bottom fishing, you can only We always call rock fishing day off fishing, right? You wanna get an easy day on the water, low stress, not burning a bunch of fuel, catch a bunch of fish and have a good time. That's rock fishing. Well, this is kind of top of the drift. Let's give this one more, catch a couple more reds or whatever, and then let's go look around, man. This okay. is, it's wide open. Well, it seems like you got like a playground right here that you've never, like a brand new playground. You've never got to check it out, so. Every spot you come across is, is a new spot, right? It kind of reminds me of like why I love Baja. Just run over here, oh, this looks good on a map, let's go try it, you know, it's kind of the same thing. And I do like to catch my cod fishes. Now that we have unlimited depth to work with, we have unlimited areas to fish. This means I can run 10, 20, 30 miles in pretty much any direction, look for a piece of hard bottom, and start catching fish. The drift is totally different. I don't know. The drift changed or something? Totally changed. Not that it matters, because my jig's just sitting there. And, oh, that's a good one. Oh, what'd you find there, Captain I got a Ross? good one there. Now, is that on the sink? I was just holding it going around the motors. How deep were you? Not, not very deep. Probably the shallowest I'd caught one yet. No way, looks like a good one too, huh? Yeah, he, he jumped on it. Is that on the bottom? Nope. Oh my gosh. To the water line. Dave, I don't appreciate you crowding me back here, buddy. <laughs> I'm crowding your scene. Oh boy, I'm almost out of line. Oh boy, and you're not bit yet? I haven't hit the bottom yet. Oh, well, you're probably bit then. I didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I got a jump. I got a jumbo. This one feels like he's got some weight to him. Might have a big cow cod. That's the biggest cod you're gonna catch is those cows. That's yours. Is that mine? This one doesn't feel real big. Oh, nice red, Dave. Look at that. It's a good one. Another good one. Really nice fish. Here comes mine. Oh, dude, it's a big cow. It's a big cow cod, yeah. Big cow cod. That's a red. Oh is my it, god. Is, is that a red? That is a red, dude. That is a That's world a record class red. Get a hand on that thing quick. Yeah. Dude. Wow. Is is that a good one? Yeah, that cool. is one of the biggest ones I've ever seen, Rush. Really? I'm not joking. <laughs> Look at that thing. Look, Look at that, that guy. Dude, forehead wow. on him is like, Look how fat I he it is. Was a cow cod. I thought it was a cow. He's huge. Dude, Rush, that's as big as they get, buddy. Really? Yeah, yeah that's, I mean, as big, that's, as, that's the biggest one I've ever seen. That's got to be eight and a half or nine pounds. Look at how fat their head is. <laughs> That's something you've got there, buddy. Oh, I'm stoked for you, man. So this is a big red here, huh? So I'm telling you, it's as big as they get. You wanna take employees, clients, guests, whoever, anybody who wants to enjoy a great day on the water and come home with some awesome fish, that's rock fishing. So we beat these cod up. That's a giant, an absolute giant, buddy. That's a big old cod. Best cod fishing I've seen so far. <laughs> How about you, Dave? Yeah, it's epic. R really awesome. This spot is as good as it gets, man. We got plenty of fish. I think Rush knows what comes next. We're gonna take some of these things back to the house, maybe batter them a little bit, put them in a tortilla. What do you think? Oh yeah. No, we gotta get in before the uh, grocery store closes. All right, boys, we got a long run ahead of us. Let's get this guy on ice, and then we're gonna go ahead and head for the barn and have some tacos tonight. All right, I'm gonna box this guy. Let's go. Let's go. Before you leave the dock, 
please have a good plan to release these fish and treat them with respect. Have that release set up standing by, ready to go. Get that fish back in the water at the depth in which he'll be healthy again. Get him off the hook, go back to fishing, and enjoy this fishery. You got a golden ticket here. This area has been opened back up. As a guy coming from the East Coast who does a lot of bottom fishing, you guys got something special there, so take care of it.